We are waiting, sir. Um, I made a lucky. We are waiting for you, sir. Oh my, I'm not sure too. Okay, let's just save time. Uh, I believe the session we get interacting as we continue. I don't know what the problem is. Um, okay, I don't know what the problem is, but let's just continue. I believe everyone can hear me, by the way, and um. It will get interactive as we progress in the session. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for being taught through the week. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for protection. Thank you for the knowledge you've been sharing, the interaction, all this well. It's another session. We ask that you will teach us yourself and you will help us to understand everything the facilitator will teach us. We pray for wisdom for the facilitator. And Lord, we pray that the session tonight will be very interactive and you will help us to make use of everything we'll learn to make our society a better place. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. My name is Peace, and I will be your anchor once again tonight. Um, if you've been following the series, for those of us that have been with us for a number of weeks now, we've been talking so much on um research we've been talking so much on um how we can do research at this kind of time time where every everything virtual is going virtual we can't really do the normal paper pencil the normal physical things we can we carry on with before but now things are getting virtual and we need to learn to do the same thing we've been doing over the years now today is a little bit still on that, but a little bit more specific. I'm sure um, all of us in research, we understand what data analysis is. And I also think we also understand that data analysis is way going beyond just gathering data, gathering information, and having someone sit back to analyze the data for us. Um, the analysis is really going way into things that affect us day to day. For instance, people are gathering information, analyzing them to make decisions that affect our health. And they call it predictive modeling. People are going into um, data analysis to predict politics, to predict a whole lot of things, not even just things that don't really have affect human lives. If they could do that to even predict um, how cells grow in the body, how germs are multiplying in the body, that's to say that is, they are getting into data analysis to affect the life, the breaths we hold. So that's how severe data analysis is at the moment. So you have people doing machine learning, you have people doing uh, business analytics, you have people doing predictive modeling. And because we are educators, the, um, there is an the aspect of data analysis we are to focus on. And that's, that's what we want to do tonight by talking on one of the major tools one of the major packages that can be used to analyze our data. And, uh, and if you've read through the link that was sent, you've seen the topic already. We are talking on practical application of SPSS package for data analysis in educational research. And we have a professor taking the, the seminar tonight. He's a former director of ICT, Federal University, Dutsima. He's a former head of the Department of Science Education at the same university in Castina State, and is an expert in educational measurement and evaluation. Please help me welcome Professor Olatoye. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, let me ask, will you be helping me to share the screen or I should be sharing from here?
You can share from your hands, sir. Okay, so you can share the screen, screen yourself. And let the host enable me to share the screen. Okay, I think everybody can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Are you hearing me? We are hearing you. Good evening, everybody. I'm happy to be on board. I want to thank the organizers for the privilege you have given to me to uh, anchor or to present this uh, workshop, this paper on SPSS. So I'm happy to be with you. I want to appreciate our senior colleagues, all my colleagues, everybody that is here tonight. Like uh, I've been introduced, I'm Professor Lato Yare from Department of Educational Foundations, Faculty of Education, Federal University, Dusima, Casina State. And tonight I'll be presenting uh, a paper, a workshop tied to application of SPSS package for data analysis in educational research. And uh, I would like you to follow. If you have your laptop there, you can follow. But if you don't have your laptop, it's also good. Uh, these uh, procedures can be followed, or let me call it a manual, can be followed after now. So that if you follow it step by step, I didn't download it from internet. I it's a collection of uh, you know co collection based on practical experience that I've gathered over the years, and it's a kind of step by step uh, procedures on how you can do data analysis using SPSS. Thank you very much. As we start now. Uh, this, uh, you can see the, I think you can see me. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And so we can view you. you. And you can see the screen. Let me just run through the uh, paper. You can see the SPSS and its benefits. SPSS, the full meaning of SPSS is statistical package for social sciences. And it is used by researchers to perform statistical analysis. And SPSS is very, very important. Normally, this is not the first time I will handle a topic like this. Normally, if it were the physical, where we can have physical interaction, I will have shared a questionnaire where each participant will have assessed uh, themselves on some of the skills concerning data analysis. So that at the end of the workshop, they will still reassess themselves and be able to know what they have gained from the workshop. So uh, these are some of the skills, if you follow very well, that I'll be able to gain uh, concerning this. Uh, a workshop, a plotting of graph, you can assess yourself, how you can use SPSS software, use of correlation in data analysis, data coding, data collection procedures, drawing of pie chart, many of t-tests and so on and so forth. Now, I want to go to the next screen and I want you to all follow. When you want to do data analysis, the first thing is to collect data. And when you collect data, there are different ways by which you can collect data. Let me just mention some of them. Questionnaires, interviews, and observation. I don't need to elaborate on this. Many of us are already familiar with them. Now, let me show you an example of a, a questionnaire. Sample of a questionnaire. We can see a questionnaire there. And uh, the questionnaire, was designed by somebody in Federal University Dusima. You can see the address, the instruction as we normally do. 
The section A is normally the background information where you are asked about maybe your local government area, name of school, class type of school, gender, age, and so on. And the respondents are requested to fill the questionnaire according to their knowledge or their feelings. Uh, and they are also told to be as faithful or truthful as uh, possible. Uh, now, after the questionnaire has been filled or completed, the next thing is to do coding. And uh, you know, when you administer questionnaires, you may administer to up to 50, 100, even in thousands. And then you have to do coding one by one. For example, the first one, let, or let me say you add a respondent. Let's say you had administered these questionnaires, and this is a copy from a particular respondent. And the name of this respondent is Yahaya Fatima. And this is like a sample of a completed questionnaire by one of the respondents, just one of the respondents. And whatever you do to the questionnaire, uh, filled by Yaya Fatima is the uh, way you also do to each of the other questionnaires. Uh, the name is Yaya Fatima. It's not in all cases that you ask for name, but because this is a training session, uh, let's say you are asking for name. The gender, he has, I told you it's a completed questionnaire. This Yaya Fatima is a female, so you can see the tick that she has filled female. Not only that, the school type, she is teaching in a public school. And uh, this questionnaire is on uh, job satisfaction in public school. So there are, these are five items from the questionnaire filled by Yaya Fatima on these are indices of job satisfaction. So you can see the statement, strongly agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. We are all familiar with four-point liquor scale. So salaries and allowances. This uh, lady or this woman said she agreed that salaries and allowances are paid regularly. Resources for teaching are always provided if she disagreed. And uh, I'm denied of privileges. I don't like teaching. She strongly disagreed to that statement. Then the fourth statement is he strongly agreed that to the statement that says, I'm encouraged to teach because of the motivation from the management. Then the last one here, I don't enjoy teaching. She disagreed. Now this brings us to coding. If you cannot code, you cannot use SPSS because all the statements on your questionnaires must be translated into figures so that SPSS will understand. And that's why any uh, thorough training on SPSS or let me say basic training on SPSS must involve coding or scoring of items so that you'll be able to translate the items into the language that the SPSS will understand. Now let's go to coding now, we're still on that uh, uh, slide. We see that the items can be positively worded and can be negatively worded. When an item is positively worded, an example of that is that salaries and allowances are paid regularly. And uh, when they are negatively worded, a good example is uh, I'm denied privileges, I don't like teaching. That is a negatively worded item. So the way you will do it is that when you are coding, if there are positive items, so, uh, for strongly agree, it will be four. For agree, it will be three. For uh, disagree, it will be two. And strongly disagree will be one. For negative uh, items, as you can see in the table, I don't need to repeat, reverse is the case. So you can see for salaries and allowances are paid regularly. Since this is a positively worded item and is ticking agree, 
then the coding will be three. Resources for teacher are always provided is a positive item. I he chose disagree. So the coding will be two. I'm denied privileges. I don't like teaching. The coding will be four because it's a strongly, uh, it's a negatively worded item. Number four, positively worded. So he chose strongly agree. It will be four as well. So I don't enjoy teaching it's a negative. If you look at the table below, negative in a negatively worded item like this should be score three. The maximum obtainable score here is 20 because the highest score on each item is four. And if somebody scores 444 four, four on, four, on five items, that would be four times five, and the maximum will be uh, 20. The minimum, the minimum will be five because the least or the lowest score on an item is one. One times five will be five. I want to tell us that this is an example of an interval scale where you don't have zero points. And the, it's an example. And I want to use this opportunity because it's because of our time. Before you can be a good analyst, you must know the measurement skills, uh, nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale, and ratio scale very well, so that you will not be like a roadside uh, data analyst. Because computer is garbage in, garbage out. Even when what you are uh, doing does not follow a uh, procedure, technical procedure, computer must still bring out something for you that you think you are correct. Now let's go to the next slide, and that is a coding. Uh, the agenda is a nominal scale. Whether you give male one or you give female two, the, it doesn't have weight. Likewise, uh, school type, public and private. What you need, what you need uh, at every point in time is to be consistent. If you are giving one to male, give one to male throughout. If you are giving one to female, give one to female throughout. The same thing with public and private school. It doesn't mean one is greater than two or two is greater than one in this case because it's a nominal scale. Now, if you look at the next table, table four, Yaya Fatima is a female. And because female, we are coding female as consistently as two. So under gender, you have two. Our school type is uh, she teaches in a public school, so it's given one. And the score on that questionnaire above is uh, 16 out of the maximum obtainable score of uh, 20. So Yaya Fatima on gender will be coded as two, uh, school type as one, uh, uh, job motivation as 16. And if there is another questionnaire, let's say uh, teacher effectiveness questionnaire, let's assume she also scores, uh, scored uh, 15. So in SPSS, one row is for one respondent. One row is for one respondent. And that row may have uh, one, two, or you know, three, or many columns. So here you have, you have Fatima, two, one, 16, uh, 15. So you are now uh, uh, coding. This is the language the SPSS understands. There is another person that filled the questionnaire. His name is Achase David. He's uh, a male because he's one. He is teaching in a private school because private school is coded too. And the uh, job motivation, when the questionnaire was administered, he scored 10, where Yaya scored 16. And the uh, teacher effectiveness, he scored 11. The same thing with Lukman Abdulatif. You can see it's a male. Uh, he's teaching in a private school and the uh, job motivation is uh, 17, uh, 18. So uh, you can see all of them like that. So that I don't need, to, uh, I've given you uh, those examples. I think uh, you understand how you can interpret uh, the rest. Let me ask at this juncture whether I'm communicating. Is anybody hearing me? You can unmute yourself for two seconds and let me know whether you are following so that it will not just be one way communication. 
We are hearing you, but the slide is uh, shaking. The slide is okay. shaking, but we are hearing you clearly. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Let me also hear more responses. Or mute yourself for one or two seconds and let me hear, let me hear feedback. Are we following? Hello? It's only Dr. Arion's voice I heard. Are we all following? Good evening, everybody. Please unmute yourself and let me know that you are following. We have 27 participants. I want to be sure yeah. the participants are following me. Please kindly unmute yeah, yourself and let me yeah, hear they are following you. a word from you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, you are welcome to SPSS. Yes, Party we are following you. And they are chatting. They are... Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you all. Now you are welcome to SPSS. In SPSS, the first thing is to download SPSS. You have to download SPSS. After you have downloaded SPSS on your desktop or into your system, uh, many of us are familiar with Excel. Excel has spreadsheets. And SPSS also looks like Excel, but Excel has only one face, whereas SPSS has two faces, like two sides of a coin. So after you have installed SPSS, uh, you can create the shortcut on your desktop. If no shortcut, you can still go through the document or whichever place you put it. Now, when you have installed SPSS, this is how it will look like. If you have Windows at uh, 2010, it may not be like this for Windows 98. Now, are you having installed SPSS? So what you will now do is that you click on your SPSS after you click on your SPSS, you have something like this that looks like Microsoft Excel page. If you look at the bottom left of, your, of this screen I'm sharing, you will discover you have something like data view and variable view. The one with the orange background is the, what, what you are seeing presently data, I'm uh, sorry, variable view. If you click variable view, this is what you see. That is why you have figure two, variable view. If you click, click data view, you will also see data view. If you are not careful, you may not know the difference between variable view and data view. So I'm going to show you data view very well, I mean, very soon. But look at variable view. If you look at the top, or variable view, you will see name, type, uh, width, decimals, labels, and so on and so forth. I'm saying this so that you'll be able to know that data view does not have that. Because if you are, if you look at variable view and data view casually, you will not know the difference. Now let's go to data view. You can see the data view now. You can see it's different. It's a bit different from the variable view. That is figure uh three so you can alternate between variable view and data view like i told you it's like uh, two sides of a coin now the data we have created or inputted above we need to input into spss so this is the bridge between coding and the uh, entry data into SPSS. Now, the first thing you will do is uh, you go to variable view. 
So you this the the, the table where you have Yaya Fatima as the first name is what you want to convert and enter into the variable view. With this manual, if you have your laptop with you, you can follow this example, follow the procedure, and it will be as if a teacher is with you. Now you say table four, we want to enter table four into the variable view now. So all you need to do is to type gender, the first variable in that column. Gender, you type a school type, you type job uh, motivation, then you also type job effectiveness. These are the four variables that you type as they appear in table four. All these other things you are seeing, numeric, uh, 8822, none, we appear automatically as you type these things from one to four, serial number one to four. All other things you are seeing, they don't bother, they will appear automatically. Then let me send a, a note of warning here. When you are typing, there must not be a space. If you are typing school type, for example, there must not be space between school and type, which you not accept it. Job motivation, there must not be a space between job and motivation, and the same thing with job effectiveness. And there is also a limit to the number of uh, character that that column can accommodate. But on that label, if you want to explain very well and use longer statements and so on, label we do it, you can explain. Label we take space and we also take longer uh, number of uh, characters. Now we continue. So what is the next stage after you have entered this? Uh, let's go to the next slide. And uh, that is uh, when you get to the next slide, the other side of the coin is what you click. So after you have entered the first, uh, the data into that uh, variable view, you now click data view. All those things you enter uh, in the, the first column after serial number, we not we now appear the way they have appeared now. You know, gender, you first enter gender from uh, bottom, sorry, from top to bottom. But now it will not uh, it will it will now be arranged, or those variables will now be arranged from uh west to east or from the left to the right, instead of from uh up to bottom. So that means you have created columns. So you can now enter your data the way uh, they are in the table four. Just enter manually. So under gender, Yaya Fatima is number one. So it, 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 she will be number one throughout. The second person, I, I just said David, will be number two. Uh, he will be number two throughout. So uh, each respondent will have one role. There can be many variables for that respondent. Now, after you've done that, we now enter the figures the way you have them in table four. Let's see how, after you have entered the, you just enter manually. Can you see? You enter Yaya Fatima, a female, school type, uh, you know, public school. She's called 16 in job motivation questionnaire we earlier treated, then job effectiveness, she scored 15. The same thing with the second one, David Achase. So that what you have now in your coding sheet, uh, you now transfer into the data view. So having done that, the next stage, as simple as ABC, I think being, you have your laptop there and you are following, you will do your analysis very soon. After you've done that, there are some specifications you would like to include uh, in your data input. For example, you may want to uh, indicate what is two under gender and what is one. So what you need to do is to click under values. Under values, you click. But if you, from experience, I'm talking from experience now, and I want to take note of this, the clicking must be towards the extreme right. 
If you click the middle or extreme left, it will not bring this dialog table you are seeing. Inserted at the center of the bigger dialog box. Uh, it will not. So you have to click towards the right side, right corner, the extreme right. So after you have clicked, this table of value labels will come out. So the value, you have two. You now label two as female. You click add, it will come to that place where you have one is equal to a uh, male. Then another one you say, you at, at another time you click one, you say male, you click add, it will come to that other place uh, where you have uh, one is equal to male. Then after you've done that, you do the same thing for school type, you know, maybe one for public, two for private as the case may be. After you have done that, you are preparing for your analysis gradually. We are almost there. Uh, it's as simple, I'm trying to mystify uh, SPSS analysis. It's as simple as this. In fact, if you can try it tonight or tomorrow morning, <laughs> you will share uh, your good reports with the organizers of this program. It's as simple as that. Now you now go to, after you have done all those preliminary things, male and female, you have labeled them, a school type, uh, public and private. And I want to tell you one beautiful thing about these things that whether you are dealing with 100 data or 1,000 or 10,000 data, after you have done your coding and you have done the inputs, the data coding uh, and so on, the analysis is the same. You don't feel the weight, whether you are analyzing for four or you are analyzing for 1,000, 100,000. It's the same procedure. It's just the coding that we take that we take longer time if you are dealing with uh, a large number of respondents. Now, after you've done that, something like this we have prepared after you have concluded, you can see under value now to show that you have inputted that one is equal to male and uh, two is equal to female. You can see that something is appearing there. The same thing with school type, we have inputted one is equal to private, uh, two is pub, uh, public, or the other way around as the case may be. All that matters is consistency. If one is given to male, let it be one throughout. If it's two is uh, female, let it be two throughout because you are dealing with nominal variable. Just for identification, just for naming, it's not carrying any weight. Now, after you've done that, you will now go to, I want to start by uh, calculating t-test. You may be thinking that it's a far away thing before you can get to calculate t-test. It's not far, I want to tell you. A uh, t-test, you can see your data now. You will now go to, you can see menu. You can see file, edit, uh, view, data, transform, analy analyze, and so on and so forth. Now, what you need to do now is you go to analyze. You go to analyze. After you have gone, to, uh, when you get to analyze, all these things will drop down from report to ROC. Uh, so it will drop down so you can see different statistics reports under report you can see many things under that descriptive so many things compare me so many uh, statistics in fact statistics that you may not even need throughout your lifetime they are there but the common ones we are going to handle some common ones let's look at compare me under compare means you know when you are comparing me there could be means on its own, on their own. You can have, there are three types of uh, t-test. This is not the time for me to be explaining that. There is the t-test, which we call one sample t-test, independent t-test, and peer sample 
T test. But I know peer, uh, independent and peer sample are very common. But let me uh, uh, explain you see independent sample T test, where you compare groups. Time will not allow us, I will have told you the differences between or among uh, these ty three types of uh, T tests. But let's go to independent T test. Under independent T test, you you click. If you follow this manner, you'll be surprised how easily you will follow. Uh, I have done it in such a way that there is, may not be gap between your coding and where you get your analysis. And if there is any gap I didn't take care of uh, here, you can easily contact me or any expert in uh, SP or SPSS who will be able to clarify things. Now, after you have clicked uh, independent t-test, you will get something like this. After you have got something like this, the uh, you, you will now bring job effectiveness, for example, to that, that, that inner box, that uh, is it a square or a rectangle, from that rectangle, the one that is clearly a rectangle, you now transfer to that square. Let's call it a square now. Then the gender will be below. You also transfer the gender from the rectangle to the one below where you have grouping variable. After you have transferred it, then you will now click below it. After you have clicked below it, below that grouping variable, something like this will come out. So you now divide group one, group two. If you want uh, uh, group one to come up, group two to be below, maybe male and female, or female or male uh, down, this is where you determine it. Then after you've done that, then you will now say continue, you click on continue. So after you have clicked on continue, you will now click on OK. You'll be surprised. Something like this will just come out very easily. And you will smile. So you can see now, this one will come out. If you use the same example, exactly the same example, exactly the same data figures that I gave uh, you earlier, this exact output will come out. The analysis will run automatically. Mail five male, males, uh, five females. That is five male uh, teachers and five female teachers. The mean is there, uh, I think 13 point something for those who have good eyesight. And uh, the mean, you have 12.4 for uh, female. The standard deviation has come out, the standard error has come out. Then let me run through how you will do it. You know, theoretically, the degree of freedom should be n1 plus n2 minus 2. So that is 5 plus 5 minus 2. So that would be 8. You can see the degree of freedom is already 8. And significant value, you can see there for a two-day test. And that significant value is what you will compare with 0 0.05 to know whether it's significant or not. So if it is higher than 0 0.05, is not significant, and if it's lower, it's significant. The lower the uh, uh, p-value or significant value, the more significant. Now, that means for this case, there is no significant difference between male and female teachers. Uh, you see job satisfaction now. Uh, male and female uh, teachers' job effectiveness in uh, that particular location that we consider. So the null hypothesis can be, uh, there is no significant difference between male and female teachers' uh, job effectiveness in Casino State. Now, there are five females interpretation, five males, N1 is equal to five, N2 is equal to five. The mean score for male teachers' effectiveness is uh, 
and t value is equal to 0 0.189, which you can see in the table above, and p value is 0 0.855, which you use to determine whether uh, there is significant difference or not. Now, I put the exercise there. Since there is no physical interaction, there is no way we can do this, but you can do it on your own, and you can get back to the organizers if you have problem. And uh, some of our colleagues, our senior colleagues that know much about SPSS on this platform. Now, enter the table in figure four into data view and data, uh, sorry, data view and variable view. And you now test the hypothesis. Is there any significant difference between male and female teachers' job motivation? The one we did as example was uh, job effectiveness, but this time around, job uh, motivation using T test. Then you can also practice, is there a significant difference between public and private school teachers' job motivation? You also use independent T test. Uh, the same thing goes for correlation. In T test, we compare me. Even in ANOVA, you compare me. The only thing is that in T test, you compare me between two groups. I ANOVA, you compare means among uh, three or more groups. And that is uh, the, uh, the difference between T test uh, and uh, ANOVA. So, but in correlation, correlation is relationship. Relationship. Uh, relationship. Uh, the, uh, a popular one is piercing product moment correlation. There are other correlation formulas or methods. Like you have Spearman uh, rank order correlation, you have by serial correlation, and so on and so forth. But the most popular is a piercing product moment correlation, which we are going to consider as a second example. So the same procedure, I don't have to labor so much now. You go to analyze. The same data, you don't have to re-enter your data again. It's the same data. It doesn't matter the number of uh, respondents, like I said earlier. You just go to analyze, and uh, you go to correlate. When you get to correlate, you choose uh, by bivariate. Bivariate, that is the language here. When you choose bivariate, you will uh, transfer the variables of course, you find relationship between two variables, A and B, for example. So you transfer job motivation from the first rectangle to the second rectangle because there can be you can compare a relationship between any two variables in the first uh, rectangle. So you just choose the two variables you are interested in for now. So here we chose. Uh, job motivation, you take one at a time. But if you press on control, you click one, you press on control, and you highlight the two, you can transfer the two at the same time. But if you don't know how to do it, just transfer them one by one. So from the first rectangle to the second rectangle, then you see other uh, different types of correlations. So the computer is asking you, which one do you want? We are saying piercing product moment. So you pick the first one, piercing. So if you want to do Spearman, it's just the same way. Instead of choosing piercing, you will, you will tick uh, or choose uh, Spearman. Do you want to run one tail or two tails? Two tail. I think the more popular one is uh, two tail. So you choose two tail and uh, you now put OK. Immediately you put OK. You can explore. You know, that is one thing with uh, SPSS is uh, users friendly. You can explore your own options, uh, what else is there, uh, other things, you know, bulb straps and so on, you can explore. Now, after you have chosen those two variables into the second uh, rectangle, just as easy as ABC, just click OK your analysis will come out. It's as simple as that. It's not complex. So there is no reason why you should not be able to analyze your data by yourself. So you have the 
uh, table, the printout now, which is very easy. You can compare the two variables. And if you are interested in the correlation matrix, where you find the correlation uh, between two variables, between any two variables, and you are dealing with many variables, it's also possible. Uh, you intercorrelation matrix is a way of summing many uh, correlation coefficient into a single uh, table so that at any point in time you can find out the correlation between any two variables by getting the coordinates of the column and the uh, row and you'll be able to get a, the particular correlation coefficient. Now, we go to computation of regression. Computation of regression. You don't have to re-enter your data analysis, uh, sorry, your, your uh, data or figures. So just go again to analyze and drop down to regression. We want, uh, the computer will ask you which kind of regression do you want to do. The most, uh, the most common, I think, is linear regression. Linear regression is when you have one dependent variable and one independent variable. And I want to tell you at this, uh, at this time that at any point in time, you can only uh, do a computation for one dependent variable. You can have one independent variable, two independent variable, as many independent variables as possible, but at every point in time, there, must, there will only be one dependent variable. Even when you are doing path analysis, cost model, you have to do different regression and extract the pathways so that you'll be able to form your uh, models, the, your model. Now, uh, we now get to regression we want to find the influence of job motivation on job effectiveness. It is logically correct that job motivation should have impact on uh, job effectiveness because in any uh, very uh, scientific uh, topic, there must be logical possibility, especially when you are using regression, that A should be able to influence uh, B. So here, the dependent variable, there will always be one space. You can only have one dependent variable at a time. And this time around is job effectiveness. And uh, you can have many uh, independent variable, but here we are having one independent variable. And that is where you have linear regression. When you have more than one dependent variable, it's called multiple regression. Now, after you have done that, you have uh, transferred the dependent variable to where it's supposed to be, the one up, and you have transferred the independent variable to where it should be, the one down, the rectangle down. Then all you need to do is just to click OK. And it's as simple as that. Just click OK. And as you click OK, your output will come out. So let me just tell you here, you have capital R, and that is, uh, you have R square, you have adjusted R square, and uh, you have um, the ANOVA table, the ANOVA table that follows uh, regression. I want to tell you here, the ANOVA table that follows regression analysis is different from the ANOVA table when you are comparing me. You know, this one does not have in between. It doesn't have uh, between and, uh, you see, within, uh, under the first column. So you can easily differentiate between the ANOVA that comes out as a result of regression and the ANOVA that comes out as a result of analyzing uh, ANOVA itself. Now, uh, you have R, you have R square. The, if you have, uh, if you are talking about uh, contribution of uh, job motivation to job effectiveness, how much contribution you you now interpret it using the R square, 
when you get the R square, I think it's around 49, 0.494. You multiply by 100. <clears throat> that will shift the decimal by two. So that will be around 49 point uh, something. That means the contribution of job motivation to job effectiveness is 49.4. Uh, uh, that means if you take care of job motivation very well, you can as well, you we, we will have taken care of uh, 49 point something percent of what we make the staff to, uh, the teachers in this case, to be uh, effective. Uh, let me also tell you this, which some may not know. Uh, and I want you to listen very well. <laughs> there is a diff, uh, there is a similarity between regression and uh, relationship. That is a uh, correlation. <laughs> and I want to tell you tonight that if you have, if you know correlation between two uh, variables, you can get the R square. If you find out the correlation between job motivation and job effectiveness, you'll be surprised that what Pearson product correlation coefficient will give you is the same thing as what capital R will give you here. You can try it. But there is a time you can apply regression. There is a time you can apply only regression. There is a time you can apply only uh, correlation. And there are times you can apply both. Maybe later we'll explain this very well. Uh, so that, to, because I'm also conscious of time now. Uh, maybe I should ask from the, whether I should continue because I try to respect time a lot. Let me hear from the organizers whether I should end up here or I should continue. Let me hear from the organizers. Uh, please. please continue. Okay. Please, you can continue. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want the situation whereby they invite you and you take their time. Say they won't invite somebody like this again. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's just on the lighter mood anyway. Now, you see, uh, though Excel, sorry, uh, SPSS has uh, a place where you can uh, plot graph. If you look at the menu above, you can see file, edit, view. Then you get to a place where you have, where my cursor is, if you can see it, where you have graph. But over the years, I've discovered that when you plot with a, a, a SPSS or Microsoft Word, it's not as beautiful as plotting with Microsoft Excel. In fact, Excel is the best in plotting graph. And especially when you are using descriptive statistics, Many people want to see graph, you know, figures and so on and so forth. And because the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet is also similar to uh, SPSS, that is why I'm just bringing it in. And you can follow the manual on your own. So let me just dash in briefly into Microsoft Excel. So that after you have done your data analysis, there are some things you can add, like that we give your reports a kind of aroma, beauty, you no, know, uh, you know, present. People will appreciate your presentation more when you also uh, illustrate or present some data using graph, pie chart, and all those things. Now, let me go briefly to Microsoft Excel, and I want to say you can follow this manual and do it in the, in the corner of your room, and you will get it. Let's look at state A, B, C. Let's say as a result of your data analysis, you have a table like the one that is shown in table five below. Let maybe number of jam candidates from different states. State A, they presented 12,000 candidates. State B, 3,517 candidates. State C, 5,710 5, candidates and so on and so forth up to state F. I didn't put any state so that some people will not think I'm biased against some states. Now, uh, you have the figures there. So you, all you need to do, just go to your Excel and you know, 
write it the, exactly the way you are seeing it here. You can see it state A, B, C. Just write in different columns, not the same column, in different columns. Just write state A in one column, the corresponding number in the other column, state B, and so on and so forth. Just go to a uh, pie chart. You will see it there. But this time around, it's not SPSS. I'm talking about Microsoft Excel. Then make sure you highlight what you have printed, and what, sorry, the data you have inputted, so that you have black rectangle, you no know, covering them, surrounding. The first column, the first row, will not have any background, just the way it is shown. Once you do that, go to Pi, and you'll be surprised what we see. I just feel this should be an additional knowledge tonight. The kind of pie chart you need, you can see different different types and color. Once you just click like this, you will just see. Isn't it beautiful after you have presented a table like the one about and you are you know, surround, uh, you know, supporting it with a, a, a diagram, beautiful diagram like this. This will enhance our work. And one beautiful thing about this is that you can copy from the Microsoft Excel and copy and paste in the Word. It will accept it. You, uh, you can also uh, edit. You can label. So many things that I cannot tell you tonight about it. You can, you can explore because it's not the main thing we are treating tonight. I just feel like you allow you to know that too. The same way you did for pie chart, you still go back to, you go back to uh, where the diagram, if it is uh, the symbol you like, if it's pie chart, you go, instead of this time around clicking on pie, you click on, on the, this other one, column, where you have, you, if you want three dimension, if you want the plain one, you, if you want it in cone form, in cylindrical form, the same data. Can you see? Very beautiful. You can see this thing will enhance our work. It's part of analysis. And uh, this diagram, of, but you can edit, you can label, you can do many things. You can label x axis, you can label y axis. And uh, the, the, whosoever is reviewing your paper will be impressed. Then the same thing you can also do for graph. The same data, just click graph. Huh? You click on graph, the kind of graph you want. Whether you want the one with a dot, dot, or whichever one, you just click and you'll be surprised at what we see. Very beautiful graph, which you can edit. You no, know, which color you can pick any type of color you want. Can you see the same data presented as pie chart, bar chart? and the uh, graph, you can choose any one you like. I just feel like adding this so that this will enhance our uh, data presentation. Then also to add that there are so many analysis you can do, ANOVA is there, the ANCOVA is there, analysis of covariate, covariate. I, I don't think we can go into details if you want to do all those ones tonight. Uh, ANCOVA, you know that is experiment, I use that mostly for experimental study where you have to introduce pre-test as uh, your covariate uh that one cannot be done tonight and some other things like how you do chi square how you calculate your reliability acrobat uh, alpha and so on i want to tell you that we can't do that tonight i also want to tell you that tonight we cannot talk about uh, transformation i'm telling you so that you know spss is deep uh we can't do transformation. What is transformation? Transformation in those days, you have to be changing when you are coding. Like I taught you tonight, or I mentioned tonight, negative uh, scoring will be four. When it is positive, it will be one, and so on and so forth. You don't need to do all those things when you are coding again. You can just code everything as positive item. And when you want to do your data analysis, all you need to do is to identify the negative items which we just reverse within under one minute, within a few seconds. That one, we are not treating that tonight. Tonight, tonight we are not also treating how you can have data like up to 1,000, and maybe you only want to work on the first 50. How you can block others and work only on 50 
are on the same page without copy and paste and creating another file that we are not doing tonight. So many things we are not doing tonight. Uh, but uh, this just this one I've said tonight, just to whet your appetite or data analysis. Now you have the exercise there, which you can do on your own. You, you can study the table below, and uh, you can also uh, do some things, practical things with SPSS on it. You can plot bar chart, graph, you can calculate mean, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, this you can do on your own. If it were to be uh, a practical class where everybody has uh, is a laptop uh, and uh, we are to reevaluate ourselves after spending one hour, I'm uh, sorry, many hours, maybe from morning to evening, uh, you will have known by the time we finish that your knowledge will have improved tremendously. But with the little we have been able to say tonight, I believe that uh, something must have been added to your knowledge, especially for those who are encountering SPSS like this for the first time. Well, I know many people on this platform are already familiar with SPSS and they have been using it for years. So I'm not saying that everybody here is new uh, to SPSS. But for those who are new or those who are intermediate, uh, I know they must have gained one or two things from this uh, uh, lecture or workshop tonight. I want to once again thank the organizers. My senior colleagues have not gone through the participant list to know those who are on board. But I want to say I'm very grateful for the host for inviting me and I want to stop here so that if anybody has question to ask, they can ask uh, before I round off finally. Once again, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, I'm Professor Latoye, your colleague, your brother from Federal University Dusima. I'm very happy that you have participated in this workshop tonight. So I will pause so that I hand over to the moderator so that if there is any question, contribution or comment, uh, people can talk now. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Olatui. We appreciate the session. I'm sure a lot of comments have even been coming up on people enjoying the session you had with us. Just before you leave us, I would like to allow people take um, to ask their questions. So please, if you have a question from the seminar, we'll just add. Please indicate by using the hand, the, the raise of the hand feature or you drop your message on the chat session. So if you have a question to ask, please. Okay, I can see hands raised already. And please. Okay, um, there is, forgive me once again, but I think he's a prof, Professor Kafiu Etsy. Please go ahead with your question, sir. Thank you very much. Um, we want to thank Professor Latoye for the wonderful presentation. This is really, really good. Thank you so thank very, you much. very much. Sir. I have one little contribution to make. Please and go ahead, it, sir. Yes. After the coding and the data entry into SPSS, there is one very important step which we need to stress. And it is that you have to run a frequency distribution of the variables. What we have noticed is that very often when people enter the data, sometimes during the data entry stage, they make some mistakes. 
Instead of one, they can put their one, one. And instead of four, they can put their four, four. So when you run a frequency distribution, you'll be able to detect whether there has been a wrong data entry or not. So that is the contribution I want to make. That before My the analysis. Be I'm very yeah. grateful for that contribution. Thank you yeah. very much. It only shows that two are better than one. <laughs> Thank you. There, are, there could be missing figures, even blank spaces. If you run uh, what he has just told us to run frequency distribution, you'll be able to correct. You may be surprised under your gender. What you should have is one or two for each cell, but you may be discovering you're having three or you're yeah. having one, two, one, one, two, two, that kind of thing. So I really appreciate that contribution. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. You're welcome. Thank you, Professor Kafiu. We appreciate the contribution. Thank you, ma. <laughs> Dr. Aminat Egberungbe, please go ahead. Go ahead with your question, ma. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Professor Latoye, for, for yeah, the welcome, contribution. Ma. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a question. There was an argument somewhere that okay. uh, there was somebody who used um, uh, chi-square. Okay. He had categorical data, okay. which is uh, uh, based on, he had a question here where he had uh, lecturers to answer whether they are aware of um, mm. artificial intelligence uh, mm -hmm. as a means of assessing candidates. Okay. So he had this about uh, 10 questions, uh, okay. statements on his uh, questionnaire, and he, they were to choose whether they were aware or unaware. Okay. And he, he chose chi-square. <laughs> and there was this argument that the running the chi-square, is it taking a total of all the statements together or is it going to do question by question? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That kind of chi square is not popular, but it's in literature. One uh, sample chi square, where you have um, one row, but you can have two, three, or more columns. Am I right? So, and it's normally used for uh, item by item analysis using chi square. It's in literature, but what many of us are familiar with is the one that maybe you have two rows, two columns, three rows, three columns, and so on. But it is also possible. But my problem with it, if you just have what the item, and you have like yes or no, or agree or disagree as column, is that if you are not careful, your degree of freedom may be zero. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. You know, the degree of freedom for uh, the other chi square is R1, R, sorry, R minus one into bracket, and then another uh, bracket, uh, C minus one. So that may be problem, but in literature and in theory is possible. But I will advise that you should have uh, more than two columns is possible, though it's not a popular type. Just like one sample tea test is not also popular, but we teach, when we teach statistics, we also teach these things. It's possible, it's not popular. Then in the Asaran conference we had uh, recently, uh, some scholars are saying that they don't like that kind of a presentation. You, you know, so apart from Chi-Square, for the Mr. Egberungbe, or Dr. Egberungbe, you, we discovered that some people still use, um, uh, I, they use me. They, they also apply me for item by item uh, analysis. Some scholars are discouraging it too. But in literature, in literature, it's possible to have one rule and many columns and still use chi square. Do I know it's not popular, but it's also possible. 
Thank you. Well, we can have more contribution. This is an academic forum. We can have more contribution. Yes. All right. Thank you. So if there are contributions, please use the raise of the hand feature so we know you have a, um, a contribution or a question to ask. Let me quickly take this question from the chat before we go back to the voice. Um, um, thank you, Professor. Nice presentation. Which of the tables do you present in a paper from the regression outputs since they are up to three? Okay. That's a question from... Okay. Yes. The most cheating. important figure there is uh, R squared that give you the, uh, the, 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 the the determinant coefficient, the coefficient that you translate into percentage, uh, the coefficient of the time that I was saying is 49.4%. The, the amount of uh, dependent variable that can be explained through the independent uh, variable. So it's the most important figure there. But for you to know whether it's significant or not, you have to go to the ANOVA table and you have to consider the significant value there before you can know whether that R square is significant or not. And let me also tell you this from experience. At times, as low as 20%, which can be 0 0.200 R square, can be significant. So it is from the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table, that is why that ANOVA table that comes out with the regression is very important because you have the head value there. It will produce an head value, not the head value like that of the main ANCOVA. And the head value will now, uh, you, you have the corresponding uh, significant value which will make you to be able to try, uh, interpret your R square, whether it's significant or not. So that is why in your table presentation, which can vary from supervisor to supervisor, uh, the first few items, the R, capital R, R square, adjusted R square, and the error will come on top, then the ANOVA table will come below it. But both of them can be in a single table. There are some that we just present the ANOVA table and as footnotes, write the R square, uh, the R, R square and adjusted R square below it. So it depends on the method your supervisor uh, uses or is familiar with. But what matters is that your presentation must contain the capital R square, the significant value that we use for the interpretation for the interpretation to know whether the R square is significant or not. Please let me know whether I've answered your question, please. Okay. Uh, I don't know. The question was dropped as a chat. Yeah, but I do believe the person. If you if you heard and you're satisfied, please you can let us know. Probably in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and mm -hmm. let us know. Okay, there is another question here, sir. Okay. The person is asking, how do we type okay. in data for one sample C test? How do we type data from? How do we data for one sample C test? Okay. <laughs> it's the same way. And you have to go to analyze. But I don't know whether the person know when you even use uh, the one sample t test. I don't know whether I can just explain briefly when, when you use one sample t test. Should I explain briefly? Yes, I'll go ahead, sir. Uh -huh. When you use one sample, sample t test, let me use a social example this time around. Let's say Coca Cola. You know, Coca Cola is. Uh, they are claiming that they are the 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 they are bottle of Coca-Cola. A bottle of Coca-Cola contains 35 cm. So that is the main sample, the the one sample. That, 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 that is their claim. So when you now go to the market, you know, some will be full to the crown, the liquid content, some will be below, and so on and so forth. 
So when you now find the half fridge of what you have collected as sample, uh, or from your sample, you now compare it with the reference, the reference point, which is 35 CA. That is one sample t-test. And you do it just the way you do the other one. But instead of uh, going to an uh, independent sample, you go to one sample, the one before independent sample, and you follow the instruction and you will get it. But if you have a problem when you are doing it practically, you may let me know, or anybody that knows it uh, on the platform. Thank you for that, sir. So it's directly saying that it's available for, for your further question. So in case you are um, stuck while trying to do the T test, please you can reach out to him or reach out to as many who can also help on the platform. Thank you. I have another question here from Dr. Adeshino Abiodun. What factors determine the type of statistical tool to select in a specific research? A clarification on when to use C-tests and chi-square. Okay. If I know that he has limited it to T-test and chi-square, that means it will be a complex question because <laughs> That will take a whole lecture to answer. But since he has limited it to T-test and chi-square, I'm very happy. Now, when you talk about T-test, like I've said again and again, you are comparing two means. And when you talk about ANOVA, you are comparing three or more means. That is as far as ANOVA and T-test are concerned. But, when you are talking about chi-square, you are talking about categorical variables. Categorical variables, I will explain. Or what you call discrete variables that are mutually exclusive. I will explain. When you want to compare, for example, now, let me also use Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola and Fanta, you know, it is a bottle can either be a, a bottle of Coca-Cola or a bottle of Fanta. You can either be a male or a female. So you now want to compare, for example, you know, these are categorical variables. There is no in between, no in between Coca-Cola and uh, uh, Fanta, no in between male and female. You are either here or there. So when you are handling two or such variables, that is when you use chi square. For example, uh, the preference of male and female for Coke and Fanta. So Coke and Fanta can be the, in the column, then male and female can be in the uh, row. That is two by two, two column, two row. Or preference of male and female for brand of cars. Then the color, the row can be male and female. Then column can be Honda, Toyota, uh, which other one? Benz, yes. uh, Ford, and so on. So you want to see that is the kind of uh, situation where you use uh, chi square. They are categorical variables. Or like when you are finding difference between male and female student achievement in mathematics, that is the test. Because male and female, though categorical, but you want to find out their behavior on a variable that is either an interval scale or a ratio scale. So you can see that though male and female may be uh, categorical, but the second variable is not categorical. It's either a ratio or an interval scale. But in chi-square, the two variables must be categorical, discrete. Benz is different from uh, 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 under. Under is different from Ford. May is different from female. And no single individual can belong to the two groups at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. This is uh, under that circumstance, you use chi square. Thank you. I don't know whether I've answered that question. I, I hope I hope the person that asked the question is satisfied. I have quite a number of questions here tonight. So I don't know. I guess we might have to have you again 
for another seminar. But let me see how much I can still read. Okay, no problem. Time with I'm, I'm okay, thank you so much for that. Is it as a result of not having an SPSS package that has a product key? I am not getting the full item on the toolbar. Did you I get that, sir? Is it that is she's using laptop? He he doesn't have... laptop. Oh, I don't know. Um, let me call out the person that asked the question so he can kind of maybe say it verbally for us to hear. Um, uh, sorry, permit me again. I don't know the title. I can only read the names that are displayed. Mike Adediro. Please, you can unmute yourself so you can explain better. Okay, while I wait for him to do that, let me ask the next question I have here. Um, how and when does one use a piercing product to make mo uh, product moment correlation? So when you use uh, piercing moment uh, correlation, you want to find relationship between two variables. That is when you use uh, piercing product moment correlation. Relationship between student achievement in mathematics and further maths. Relationship between uh, student achievement in physics and chemistry. So you use uh, uh, piercing product moment correlation when you are talking about relationship. And I want to tell you that statistics is the same. Even in agri, when you are talking about relationship between quantity of fertilizer used and the amount of uh, products or, or output, that is relationship. Or the, you no know, that kind of, the amount of chemical used and uh, the output, that is relationship. So relationship, uh, even in sociology, the number of police in a town <coughs> and the number of crime reported every, per month, that is relationship. In education, relationship between ad student attitude and achievement, relationship between study habit and student achievement. These are cases where you can use uh, yes. uh, piercing product uh, moment uh, correlation uh, or Spearman rank order correlation. There is the same, but the only difference is that between you and the, the formula, and before you use a piercing product moment correlation, you convert your score into position or ranks or ranking before you apply the formula. That is just the difference. And let me also say this if the house will listen, I want everybody to listen to this so that I can make this clarification. I normally tell my students, there is difference between correlation and regression. And uh, I want to acknowledge the illustration given by my professor in the 90s. And I've told many students about this. And I want to say it again. Relationship and causation, they are two different things. For example, let me give you an example. If each time I wake up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, the sun is at a particular angle. I, I woke up on Monday, it was at that angle. On Tuesday, it was at that angle. Uh, you no know, looking from my window. On Wednesday, it was at that. You can see that there is relationship between my waking up and the angle of the sun. But it doesn't mean that it is my waking up that is causing the sun to be at that angle. So that means it is only a matter of relationship. It's not a matter of causation. It will be wrong to say as the number of religious houses is increasing, let's say uh, churches and mosques, and the number of crime is increasing, then you now say, the, the, it is churches and mosques that are causing crime. That would be, would be wrong. Though there is relationship, there, but there is no causation. But at times, relationship may also mean causation. For example, number of crime committed in a community and the number of police. That can be both relationship and causation. 
I don't know whether we are uh, you know, getting me. Some people can respond to what I've said. Yeah, um, someone is making a comment that um, participants cannot unmute themselves. Well, we are trying to control the background noise. That's why we kept it that way. So that was why I was asking anyone who we want to talk orally to use the raise of the hand feature so that we can uh, specifically unmute that single person so we can um, control the background noise. So as I said, um, I'm expecting Michael Adeduro to, yes, I think I can see his audio already on mute. Please go ahead. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, I'm listening. Um, thank you very much, Professor, for the presentation, sir. It was very wonderful. And you opened my eyes to see that the perspective I have about SPSS is actually wrong. That is, it's a very easy app or package to use. Now, about my question, I'm actually using my computer as you were taking the presentation. And I discovered that on my two bar, I, I can only access file, view, and custom. Others, analyze, and the rest, they are not there. And I'm asking, is it because I don't have a product key for this SPSS package? Or probably I should just go get another SPSS package and which install my system. Which version of the SPSS are you using? I have SPSS, IBM SPSS Statistics 22. 30. 22. I hope it's not a trial version. IBM SPSS Hope it's not a trial version. Sorry? Hope you are not using oh, a trial okay. version. I, maybe that's why I'm not getting Maybe the, you are using oh. a trial version and the time they gave you has expired. Because there are, there are trial oh, versions okay. online for 30 days or more. After the expiration time or period, you may not be able to use the software again, except you purchase or register with another email. So that it will be as if it's another person that is requesting for it. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You are welcome. Okay, you can also still reach out if you get. Um, there are various ways to get through with software. So if you try that and it didn't work, you can seek out for help. Thank you so much, um, Doctor Adeshino Abiodun. I can see your hands. Go ahead with your question, sir. Oh, I'm aware we have to unmute you from here. Okay. Okay, Please, thank ahead, you sir. very much. I want to appreciate Professor for that uh, very beautiful presentation, sir. I want to just add to the comments on uh, how and when does one use Pearson product moment correlation? When we want to compare two continuous variables, and the, the, the continuous variables is at that uh, uh, ordinal level. If a variable is at ordinal level, then tendency is that we use we use uh, the Spearman rank order. We rank it. We give position to the to the variables and we subtract the variables at the position from one another, then later we now square it. That is manually. Then when the, the data we are, the continuous variable we are giving is at uh, interval level. When the, uh -huh. we are, uh, the continuous variable we are giving is at interval level, okay, what the, the kind of uh, Correlation statistics we use is Pearson product moment correlation. So I want to, to raise my question here. This, the, the question I now ask here is that, uh, what is the major difference or difference between the parametric 
and the non-parametric statistics. Because many, when they select a uh, method of data analysis, they, they don't consider the title of the work, fees a fees, the research questions, hypothesis search. They just jump into statistics being selected for method of data analysis. So I want Professor to help us clarify further the major differences between the parametric and the thank, non-parametric. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you. You have answered the question in part. When you are talking about uh, piercing product moment correlation, the minimum it can take is interval and ratio scale. But if you want to convert, use a Spearman rank order, you have to convert your interval or ratio scale to ordinary scale. If you are having ordinary scale already, it's okay. So just to corroborate what you have said, because even if you have it as interval or, or a ratio scale, for Spearman rank order, you still have to convert it to ordinary scale. So I agree with you. So the, you have answered the question in part. I think you are answering so that others will benefit. The difference between parametric and non-parametric tests. Let me give you an example of non-parametric uh, parametric tests. Parametric tests first. ANOVA, ANCOVA, all those ones that you don't need to rank. But when you talk about parametric and uh, non-parametric uh, tests, you are talking about chi-square, which are discrete, where you do ranking like a cross car wallis, uh, which other one, uh, this uh, weak all those things, where you have to rank before you uh, do your uh, analysis. But for, I think I can say for every uh, non -parametric, uh, parametric test, there is non parametric equivalence that you can use, which we may not be able to uh, enter today, because that is also deep. For every parametric test, there is a corresponding non-parametric test you can do. But in those non-parametric tests, there are, uh, some of them are discrete variables, and also mostly you use ranking. Thank you. I don't know whether Dr. Adesina is following. Yeah, I'm with you, sir, Professor. I uh, do you agree with me. <laughs> I, I agree with your. Okay. With your I know you asked so that I can touch some area, but that one is a broad, another broad area that we can't handle tonight. Thank you, sir. Doctor Saidu Abubakar. Please go ahead with your question, sir, or if it's a contribution, please go ahead. My, my question is, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Right. Yes, thank you so much. I think my question is to the organizers. This is very wonderful, and I was thinking, uh, are we likely to have another uh, session of this? Because, uh, yes, Prof, I can see you are smiling. I, uh, Fortunately, joined a bit late, but uh, from what has been said is fantastic. And I would want to know if the organizers, I mean, organizers can have another session where you can build up. Because I can see we have started uh, much on the initial analysis. I can see, for instance, there is need for us. What happens, for instance, when you do an analysis with, uh, with, with ANOVA and uh, maybe the, there is significant differences? And I think that will cause for post hoc or post rejection test and uh, that your presentation has not touched that one today and i believe maybe subsequent presentations will do something like thank you so much it has been fantastic thank you very much that is a broad area you people are touching we can't <laughs> we to handle that we have to handle it with ankuva we have yes, we sir, are, yes, sir. We are wise analysis uh, post yes. test weather yes. or drunkard test and yes. uh, plotting mean uh, score you see all those things it's yes, a very sir. good area <laughs> but, right, sir. Uh, but it depends <laughs> on the organizers yes uh, that's why i said the organizers too should have to come in on to, to this one <laughs> okay, okay, okay. yes thank you so much bro thank you, you. Take my trust. 
Thank then you also so much. Add to what he has said, when it is significant, you don't need to, oh, sorry, when there is significant difference, so that we know where the difference is coming from. Exactly, uh, exactly. Just to support what he has just said. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I think I shared the same thinking, and I already said it earlier that to my this might likely be part one, and if yes. that is available, so we, we will get back. We will get I think back those of us that have those of us that have logged into this one should be automatic uh, uh, invitees to the next session, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sir. <so. laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. The contribution made it much more effective. And I believe we keep being interactive this much. We we'll learn from one another. Thank you, Professor. We are so grateful you took yeah, our welcome. time. To Thank you for the opportunity. And the depth of what you shared. We don't mm -hmm. take it for granted. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone, too, that stayed with us till this moment. We are so grateful. Just a brief announcement before we leave. Last week, I did announce that we are still accepting abstracts for those who we like um, to feature in the journal. And the deadline has been shifted to the 30th of September. That is next week, wet next week. So please, if you are here to send in your abstracts, we're already collecting the abstracts. So we'll have the last person sending by wet day. Thank you so much. And also to remind us of the virtual annual conference coming up from the 16th to the 20th of November, 2020. The team is redesigning educational assessment for the 21st century. So please prepare to attend. It will be virtual, as I said, via Zoom. So, so send in your abstracts, get your schedule cleared for the, for the dates and be ready to receive as much from our facilitators. We are so grateful, everyone. Um, I read a number of comments requesting for, for the slides. Um, the, I'm, I'm going to seek the permission of the presenter. If you permit us to send the slides to the participants, we'll go ahead and- Request granted. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, sir. So yeah, we'll, send, we'll send the slides and the other materials as much as, as we can lay our hands on to send to you. Um, Shortly, I'll let you know if it will be your mail or you get it on our website, either ways. Thank you so much for joining us for the edition tonight. Until we meet next week again, my name is Peace. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Good night. Oh. Good night, sir. What our closing prayer? Closing prayer. Yes,